So now we're going to take a look at our Teams channels. So we're going to go into our Teams and basically if you're in the grid view you're going to have two sections. Everything that's really important is up at the top and then your channels are down at the bottom. Your channels are important too but in a different way. Now if you are in the list view for your teams you won't actually see that first section you'll only see your channels and that's why I recommend that especially if you're just starting out you go with the grid view. So let's switch back there we go and we'll go into this team. So up at the top you'll see your team icon for that class, you'll see the name of the class, and then you'll see the home page. It's a really good idea to check in on the home page often because that's where your teachers are going to be posting announcements, resources, you'll be able to see your schedule and assignments that you have due. You can see the student has some that are past due. So it's a really good idea to check in there on a regular basis. Now home page is a new feature. Your teachers may not all have set it up yet, but if they have, be sure to check there. From there, you have your class notebook, which we'll talk more about in another lesson, your assignments, which we'll talk more about in another lesson, your grades, so you can see how you've done on all of your assignments, and reflections if your teacher uses them. Then we get into our channels. So channels are like conversation topics that your teachers decide your class is going to need. So depending on the class, you may have more channels or fewer channels. In this team, you can see that we have the general channel, which everyone will always have, and that's where teachers will often post announcements. So in addition to the home page, it's really good to check in your general channel at least once a week. And then depending on the class, there are different categories of channel as well. So some channels may be private. In some classes, I have working groups and I have channels for each of my working groups and only members of that group are able to see that group. I will often have a classes channel and that's where my scheduled meetings are. So each channel will have what are called conversations. And again, depending on the settings, your teacher may be the only one who's able to post in that channel, and that's the case for this one. Or in a channel like this one, anyone can start a conversation. So if we're going to start a conversation in a channel, we're going to click on the new conversation button. Now I can just start a conversation and it will look like all of these ones that you see up there. Or I could click on the format button and I could actually change that to an announcement that has a really big headline. Usually only your teachers are going to want to do that, but it's good to know that that's there. So let's change it back to a conversation. We can add a subject. And that's going to let people know at a glance what this post is about. So let's say bug in the world. And we can add our bug report here. All right, so because I have clicked on the format button, you can see I can make that go away, but I can bring it back. The format button has the option to do a couple other things. So if I need to call attention to something, I can bold and underline it. I could also italicize it or strike it out. I can change colors of text highlighting. I can change paragraph indentation. I could make a bulleted list. I could make this a quote. I can add a hyperlink and if something is really urgent, I can actually go into the more options and I can mark it as important. Now use this really sparingly, only use it if it is an actual emergency that your teacher has to see right away. Because if you mark everything as important, it's going to lose its effectiveness and then nothing is important. So I'm actually going to remove the important flag. Now if I need to attach a file. I can either click on the little paper clip down there and choose where I want to attach the file from, or I can just drag and drop a file in there. So let's say I took a screenshot to help illustrate what it is I'm talking about. I could just drag that screenshot in there and it's going to load it in. I could also add our usual emojis. I can add our stickers. You don't really need to worry about most of the rest of this. So I'm going to go ahead and post this. 
and let's say I don't really like the way that picture is so big, I can click on the more menu on this message, I can go to edit it, and I can remove that screenshot. When it looks good and we want to accept those edits, you just click on the check mark. Click on the X if you don't actually want to save those changes. So that is how we start a new conversation. Now let's say that I come along and I want to reply to this conversation. I'm not going to click a new conversation. I'm going to click on reply. That's really important. That's going to keep all the replies to that topic in that topic because the conversations will move around based on the last one updated. And if you're trying to reply to something someone else has posted, you never want to go to new conversation because it's going to break that conversation apart. Always go to the smaller reply feature. And you have all of the same features that you have before. So you could reply to it and I can send my reply and I can even react to that post. So I can say, hey, good job on finding that bug. Now there is one other type of conversation that I do wanna call attention to just cause that's a really nice one to know about. There's this feature down here called praise. And if it's not in there, you can go to those three dots and you can look for it. Praise is a really, really great app because if somebody does something and it's worthy of a shout out or a pat on the back, you can use praise. So you can praise people for being brave. You can say thank you to somebody who did something really nice or solved a problem. You can praise people who were team players or who showed leadership or who were creative or who coached you through something. So let's say I'm gonna do awesome. And I can't praise myself, so my test student is going to praise the teacher. And my test student is going to say, you can add more than one person as well. So if there were a few people who were doing some great things, you can praise multiple people on one praise. And then we can preview it. That's what it's going to look like when it posts. And we can hit send. And then if you want to reply to somebody else's praise, you can click on reply and you can add to it as well. Now, because this was a test student, I don't wanna leave praise for myself up here. So if you do need to get rid of one of your messages, you can click on the more menu and go to delete. So just a couple other things that I wanna point out. We'll go into more detail later, but I do wanna call attention to the fact that up at the top of each channel, there are what are called tabs. When you go to a channel, you'll automatically start on the posts tab, but there may be others. The general channel will usually have the most because that's the one that your teacher usually tends to customize, although it can vary. So for example, in this group, our Minecraft club, I have added to the general channel uh, a wiki and my office hours and the Flipgrid that we use to talk about the quests that we're completing for our class craft. Now I can see our flip group directly from Teams. I don't actually have to leave, which can be really useful. Now every channel up at the top will have this little eye in a circle for information about that channel. If I click on it in this channel, we can see that there's the description here that helps me understand what this channel is for. In the general channel, I wanted to go here because if your teacher has pinned important posts, that's where you can see them. So when I click on the eye in the circle, it'll pop up and I can click on pin posts and I can see all of the posts that the teacher has pinned that everyone should see. Now, the last thing that I wanna call attention to about channels is actually in the me space. So when we look at the me space, we can see that in the activity and in teams, there are two icons that have this red pop up. That means that in those teams and in that activity, somebody has actually tagged us directly. So if we go back to our main team screen, we can see that some of the names of these classes are in bold and some of them aren't. Bold means there's activity in there that I haven't seen yet. So I've looked at everything that's in this team, but if I go into this one, for example, I can see that there are lots of channels that have new activity. And once I've caught up and I've seen the new activity, the bold will go away. 
If I want to see which teams tagged me specifically, I can actually see right here, this one has that little number there. So it tells me that in that team, someone has specifically tagged me that they want me to see something. And that's what this is. My teacher has tagged everyone in this channel. So to tag someone in a message, we're going to start a new conversation. All you have to do is type the at symbol and then the person you want to tag. So we'll tag me as the teacher and say, I have a problem with X. And that will send a note to the teacher in the form of this pop up here, letting them know that someone is specifically trying to get their attention. So that's another thing that you want to check. When you log into your Teams, do you have one of these red pop-ups? If I go to the activity section, I can actually see everything that I've been tagged in. So I can see that I've been tagged in this assignment, I've been tagged in this reflection, and any messages that I've been tagged in will show up there too. So you always want to be sure that you clear those red numbers to make sure that you're seeing everything that is important for you to see, as well as clearing out all of these bold channels as well.